ಸಂಶ್ಲಿಷ್ಟಮನಮಿ ಸಚಿಪುತ್ರ ಅಸ್ವರೂಪ್ರಜಾಮುರಿಪುರಿ ಮಾತುರಿ ಗೋಷ್ಟಿ ರಾಧಕುಂದಗಿರಿವರ ಮಾಧವಸ ಪ್ರಪ್ತೃಪೆಯ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ತಂ ನೋಸ್ಮಿ ಗೌರವೈ ಗೌರಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಧಿಕಾಯೈತಾಲೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಕ್ತ ತದ್ವಕ್ತ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಆನಂದಲೀಲಮಯ ವಿಗ್ರಹಾಯ ಹೇಮ ಬದ್ಯಭ್ಯಚ್ಚಾವಿ ಸುಂದರಾಯ ಥಾಸ್ಮೈ ಮಹಾಪ್ರೇಮರಸ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಶಾಂ ಸುಂದರ್ ಶಿಖಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ್ ಸ್ಮರ ಸುಮುರಳಿ ಮನೋಹರ ರಾಧಿಕರಸಕೃಪನಿಧೆ ಸ್ವಪ್ರಿಯ ಚರಣ ಕಿಂ ಕರೀಂ ಕುರು ತವೈವಸ್ಮಿ ತವೈವಸ್ಮಿ ನಾ ಜೀವಾಮಿ ತಯಾವಿ ವಿಖ್ಯಾಯ ದೇವಿ ತಂ ನಯಮಾಂ ಚರಣಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವೋ ಐ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಸಸ್ತಂಗ್ ದಂಡ ಬಟ್ ಪುಷ್ಪಾಂಜಲಿ my heart like flowers thousands and thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master my supremely worshipable spiritual guru dev asmadiya parmaradatam guru pada padma nitilila pravistom vishnu pad ashtotara satasi rupanuga charivarya shila bhakti vedanta narayan goswami maharaj secondly i offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my param guru dev to shila prabhupad and to all of our great spiritual masters in our sri rupanuga gaudiya guru parampara and finally i offer my pranam to all the assembled devotees and my dear brothers and sisters vanchakalp turupasta kripa sindu bevacha putitanam pavane pyo vaishnavi pyo namo by the courses myself sri gurang goranga we have been discussing uh, bhagavad gita chapter 9 in the previous verse uh, that is verse 30 sri krishna has said sammoham sarvabhuteshu name dvaistosti na priya yei bhajanti tumam bhaktya mai te teshu chapyam i am impartial I am equal to everyone. I am not against anyone and I don't show favor to anyone. Krishna has spoken this in relation to the souls who are vimuk that means they are indifferent to him. The souls who are oblivious to the existence of God, the souls whose consciousness is focused on their own egotism and uh, sense gratification and uh, personal selfish agendas they are in a state of vimukata they have turned away from god and uh, so krishna he is reciprocating by being indifferent to them but yei bhajanti tu mam bhaktya see krishna said those who serve me with devotion they are in me and i am in them that means that those devotees are deeply attached to me with great love and in the same way see krishna is confessing his love for his devotees i am also deeply attached to them and by this krishna is saying that this is my nature my nature is that i am prema vasyata i am controlled by the love of my devotee and just as water is a nature to be flowing at uh, room temperature so similarly it is and the water 
by its own power cannot give up that nature. So in the same way, Krishna is saying, it's my nature to be controlled by the love of my devotees and I cannot give it up. So now, in the next verse, in verse 30, see Krishna wants to intensify that statement even more by essentially saying that what to speak of being controlled by the love of my devotee, I can never give them up. Even if the devotee is uh, badly behaved, I still cannot abandon him. So this uh, next verse is an intensification of Krishna's confession of love from the previous verse. So let's look at that verse now. So see Krishna is saying, Api chet sudaracharo bhajate mam ananyabak sadur eva samantavya samyak samyag vyavasito hi saha so the meaning is that if someone is ananya bhakta uh, someone that means worships me ananya and not anyone else he doesn't worship any demigods um, Durga, Shiva, Ganesh etc so here's the qualification here that a person should be ananya one pointed in devotional service to Sri Krishna. So if such a person is Sudaracharo, he is a Sudaracha, he is a, performs some abominable activities. Achar means activity, Duracha means a wicked activity, Sudaracha means mm, excessively wicked activity even. So Krishna is saying, if such a person is devoted to me, but even at the same time, he does some terrible activities. But still, sadhureva samantavya. Mantavya means he should be considered a sadhu. That means a holy person or a, a, a respectable person. So, now, see, Krishna is saying mantavya. That means he is to be considered. Because Krishna himself is speaking it, that means that this is an injunction and an order it is a mandatory because this injunction has been spoken by God himself so if a person uh, did not consider a devotee who has done some mm, wrong things a sadhu then that person who doesn't consider him a sadhu he's at fault not only that, but actually he's committing an offense because he's going against an injunction spoken by the Supreme Lord himself. So this is very emphatic. Mm. Now, Sadur Eva Samantavya. Eva is emphasizing, he's, surely he's a sadhu. That means that he's worshipable in any case, in any uh, situation. And Sadur Eva, here the word Eva is emphasizing the word Sadhu, uh, certainly. It is re in response to a question. And that question is, if someone is your devotee and he's very well behaved, I accept he's a Sadhu. But if someone is your devotee and he's uh, not so well behaved, then can we just say that he's not really, he's a sadhu, but he's not only partially a sadhu. He's not fully a sadhu. So, in regard to this, Krishna is saying, sadhur eva. No, don't say that he's partially a sadhu. You should fully accept that person as a sadhu. And uh, why is that? Samyag vyava sito hi saha. Krishna is giving the reason for this. And uh, that is because he is properly situated in his determination he's properly situated in his resolve he has made an irrevocable decision that i will serve krishna in all uh, circumstances i will never give up one pointed service to krishna even if in due to my sins in a future life, I have to take birth as an animal or a bird or an insect. Still, I will never give up the Akantik Bhakti. As the uh, great Vaishnava poet Vidyapati has sung, 
कि हे मनुष्य पशु पकिए जनामिए तपी ताप तंगे खारम विपाखे गति गति पूना पूना मचि रहु छुआ पार संगे मडव हे मडव हे मडव हे बहुत मिनती कोरी तो हे माधव हे कृष्ण आई एम ऑफरिंग दिस पिटफुल वर्ड्स दिस प्रेयर एट योर लोटस फीट इफ इन द फ्यूचर आई व्हेन आई डाई आई हैव टू टेक बर्थ एज एन एनिमल और अ बर्ड और इवन एन इंसेक्ट बिकॉज द कर्म ऑफ विपाक my karma my f- sinful activities have become mature but i am only asking you my lord madhav for this as i repeatedly come and go in the cycle of birth and death please bless me that mati rahutu aparasange that my mati my consciousness will always dwell in your prasanga satam prasangam mama veya samvedo that i'll always be absorbed in remembering your name form quality pastimes your beautiful harikatha the narrations of your loving relationships with your devotees uh, so if someone has made such a determination that under all circumstances uh, that they must serve krishna and never leave aikantik bhakti even if lord brahma himself will come before them and say you should follow the path of karma or you should follow the path of gyan but still they will never give up bhakti then that person is rightly situated in his determination so krishna saying samyag vyavasitaha so let's have another look at this verse again the last line the word uh, vyavasita let's see the uh, etymology of this word vyavasita is um made in this way first there's a prefix v the prefix v means vishesh intensely then there's another prefix that is ava and ava means uh, it can mean down or it means away and then the um so there you have vyava v plus ava is vyava and then sitaha is coming from the datu that means the verbal root so 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 datu this verbal root means to resolve or to finish so in other words the devotee has made a resolve that i will complete this process of bhakti i will finish this uh, process of bhakti uh, completely uh, and he has made that vow with intensity and so shri dar swami in his commentary he says parameshwara bhajanena eva kritataha vishamaha definitely i will become successful i will attain my perfection by practicing krishna bhajan service to sri krishna so this is the etymology of this word so the devotee is fixed in his resolve but he hasn't become perfect yet fully and because of that there's still some mm, influence of the reactions of his previous life's uh, activities he is a praktan sanskar so we should not take those uh, apparent defects uh, in the in the activities of the devotee seriously so in the nrsinga purana there in the nrsinga purana it is said 
Bhagavati cha haravananya cheta brishama linopi viraja te manusyaha nahi shashakalo sa chavi kadachit timira para bhavatam upaiti chandraha. It means that a person who is devoted to Krishna, he may have some serious contamination, but he, that person is still glorious. And an example is given that uh, the moon has some spots on it, it has some blemishes, but still, uh, when the moon is shining in the night sky, it can never be defeated by the darkness. So because the devotee, even though he may have some contamination, he'll finally be successful, he can never be defeated by the darkness of ignorance, therefore he is glorious. Now. Um, this verse, Apichet Sudura Chero Bajate Mamananyabak Sadoreva Samantavya Samyag Vyava Sito Hisaha is very often misunderstood. And the, the nature of that misunderstanding is this that many persons take the word Ananya Bak, one who is serving one pointed, to refer only to Maha Bhagavata. Uttam Bhagavata, completely pure devotees whose all uh, activities of body, mind and words are never ever deviated even for one second from the service of the Supreme Lord. Now, it's true that Ananya Bhak uh, can refer to those devotees. So obviously if some, some such devotees were to perform some activity which was irreligious or uh, against Dharma, uh, we know that they're fully transcendental and so they should not be criticized and that is uh, a, uh, an interpretation that many devotees subscribe to but that is that interpretation has the fault of avyapti dosh that means it is uh, correct that completely pure devotees should always be considered sadhus even if they do something which is apparently against dharma but that interpretation has avyapti dosh, that means it is uh, too narrow, it is not a charitable um, interpretation and Krishna's intention is that it will also include those who are not pure devotees, those who are sadhakas, those who are practicing devotees and uh, if they have faults they're also to be considered sadhus. So let's uh, analyze these two interpretations and then understand why uh, they're both correct but they're not exclusive it is not one or the other it's both okay so first of all in Chaitanya Chartamrita there Sri Chaitanya Mahapu said Vaishnavera Kriya Mudra Vigye Nabhujai that even a great scholar uh, cannot understand the activities of pure devotees so it may be that a pure devotee could do something which would be uh, looked upon as uh, irreligious in the eyes of uh, general people. Uh, we can give an example, for example, uh, the great sage Parashara Rishi was crossing the Jamuna river with uh, Satyavati, the fisherman's daughter, and uh, in a boat. And as they were crossing the river, uh, by the inspiration of Yoga Maya, Parasarishi was inspired to impregnate the uh, Satyavati and the result of that was the birth of Srila Vyasadeva, the author of the Vedas. Now one may say, but uh, he doesn't have permission from the father, there was no wedding ceremony, how can he impregnate this girl, etc. So uh, a materialistic person from a mundane point of view might um, ascribe some irreligion to Parashara Muni, but he's a completely transcendental person. And uh, this is an, an example that could be covered by the verse of Srila Rupa Goswami in his Upadeshamrita verse 6. There he says, Drishta svabhava janita vapushasta dosha na prakritatvami abhakta janasya pasyad gangamba sam na kalubud buddha pena panka brahma uh, Brahma Dravatmam Apigachiti Nira Dharmai. The meaning is that if by our material vision we look at a pure devotee 
it's possible that we'll, we may see two faults. That is Vapu Dosh and Swabhav Dosh. A defect in the physical body and a defect in the nature. So a defect in the physical body might be something like this. Oh, I have heard that pure devotees are perfect, but this person, he needs to wear spectacles. Or this person needs to wear an earring aid. And, and so on. So his senses are not perfect. So that is a, a defect in the body. One may say, oh, this person is uh, ugly or old or deformed. Uh, but actually they're a transcendental saint. So one type of defect uh, that is apparent is uh, the defect of the body. The other is called Swabhav Dosh. And that is a defect in the nature. That a great saint sometimes may uh, become mm, mm, irritated or angry, apparently and, and uh, give a curse to someone. Uh, like uh, Narad Muni gave a curse to the sons of Kuver, Nalu Kuver and, and Manigrif. But the pure devotee, his blessings and curses are all blessings and all beneficial to everyone. So his anger is not material, it is not coming from frustrated rajas, it's not coming from tamagund, from the mode of ignorance, but rather it's, a, it's one of his ecstasies and it's for the benefit of everyone completely pure manifestation of Vishuddha Sattva, pure existence. So it may seem that a pure devotee is uh, sleeping mm, for a long time and then one may say he's in the mode of ignorance or he's eating too much, something like that. So these would be included in the Swabhav Dosh. So Srila Rupa Goswami is saying Brahma Dravatma Mapigatchiti Nira Dharmai Don't see this. You should understand it in this way, that the Ganges, Ganga Devi is pure and transcendental. But during the rainy season, you'll see lots of um, broken branches and mud and um, foam. Foam is considered to be impure. Foam and bubbles in the Ganges. So then one may say, oh, the Ganges River is not pure because here's some pollution, some contamination in it. However, if a person will bow down to the Ganges and do puja, worship the Ganges and offer prayers to the Ganges, then one will experience that by the mercy of Ganga one becomes completely pure and transcendental also. So uh, the material vision of the Ganges, uh, if you see some defect there, that does not compromise or mitigate in any way the divine pure stature of the Ganges. So pure devotees are also like that. By your mature eyes uh, you may see some defect in the body or in the behavior even, but such a person is always in the transcendental situation and we can understand that when we bow to them, worship them, offer prayers, how their mercy transforms us. So also in Srimad Bhagavatam uh, and the last uh, chapter of the Rasalila, there Shukadev Goswami says, Tajiya Shamma Doshaya Vane Sava Bujoyata. That a transcendental person can never be contaminated by whatever he does, exactly like fire. If you put something pure in a fire, the fire remains pure. If you put something impure in a fire, the fire burns it, purifies it, and also the fire remains pure. So a fire is pure at all times, uh, whether coming in contact with pure or impure substances. So in the same way, a, a transcendently situated uh, Krishna conscious saint is always pure, whatever he comes in contact in. And therefore, if a person will superimpose by their mundane vision a fault onto a pure devotee, the fault is it. As Krishna's confession of love, he's saying, I am controlled by love and I cannot change my nature, I cannot give up my devotee even if he's misbehaved. Uh, but we can also take it as a caution. Don't ever criticize devotee by your words or even in the mind. And the example is given in Srimad Bhagavatam of uh, the sons of the sage Marichi. So
the great sage Marici, he had uh, six sons in the womb of his wife Urna Devi, and their names were Smara, Udgita, Parisvanga, Patanga, Shudrabrita, and Grini. So, but what happened one day? Uh, their grandfather and also the the grandsire of the whole universe, Lord Brahma, he became attracted to his own daughter Saraswati and began uh, running after her. He wanted to enjoy some mm, uh, lustful activities, and uh, the rishis prayed to him, and, "Oh, this is quite wrong." And then he checked himself and he became ashamed. But at that time, these six sons of Marichi Muni they uh, looked down upon Brahma and they were thinking what is this they they sneered at him and because of this they had to take birth as demons so in their next life uh, in the Haribanks Purana in the second chapter of the Vishnu Parva there it is said that they uh, took birth as the sons of a demon named Kala Nemi, and in this life their names were Hamsa, Suvikrama, Krata, Damana, uh, Ripumardan, and Krodahanta. So in that life, uh, the uh, the six personalities who had now become demons simply due to condescending upon seeing some apparent fault in Brahma. Now, Brahma is a pure devotee. Brahma is their Param Guru. Brahma is their grandfather. Whatever is happening to him is happening by the mercy of the Lord. And he was quickly re rectified and he became more humble and his devotion was increased. But by looking down on him, what happened to the, the sons of Marichi? Their swabhav, their nature, their consciousness was so contaminated by this offense that they've now become demons and they've become the six sons of Kala Nemi. So in that life, they performed intense austerities to get benedictions from Lord Brahma. But they did it secretly without their grandfather knowing. So they're the sons of Kala Nemi and Kala Nemi is the son of Hiranyakashipu. Now as you know, Hiranyakashipu had done austerities to get um, blessings of Lord Brahma by which Hiranyakashipu thought that he was immortal and invincible. Uh, now, the, the six personalities being the sons of Kala and Amy, they pleased Brahma and got the blessings from him that they would be protected uh, from death. And, uh, but when Hiranyakashipu heard about this incident, he became furious. He said, what is this? You are acting independently and going to Lord Brahma behind my back? I am cursing you that in your next life you will be murdered by your own father. Now, as a result of this, in the next life, In the next life, those persons uh, took birth as the uh, six uh, children of Devaki, the first six children of Devaki, and Kala Nemi, their father, took birth as Kamsa Maharaj. So then we see in the pastimes of Krishna that each time Devaki gives birth, then Kamsa Maharaj comes and kills her children one by one. So Kamsa. Uh, was Kala Nemi before and he was killing his own children from his previous life. Hmm. Now, uh, so after that, after they were killed, they went to the planet of Bali Maharaj uh, that is called Sutal and later when Devaki was feeling some remorse over her dead children then Krishna went to uh, Sutal Lok and he retrieved them and uh, brought them back to Devaki and they uh, 
tasted her breast milk for a moment and then they went back to their position as the sons of uh, Marici in the higher planets. So in this way we've given an overview of the first interpretation of the verse that if there is a very elevated pure devotee and he does something wrong if you minimize him, criticize him in any way, then there's a terrible reaction and you will become a demon. So don't do that. Now we'll look at the second aspect uh, interpreting the verse and that is that the verse is applying to a sadhak, a conditioned soul in this world, a practicing devotee who has fixed in his heart the determination that he'll never give up bhakti but he's not completely pure yet. Now, such a person can, um, it is called praktan sanskar vasha, balatkar. Balatkar means suddenly and by force he becomes vasha under the control of praktan sanskar, an impression from a past life sinful activity. So, it should be understood that the activities of a conditioned soul, a Badajiv, are of two types. The first type is called Sambandika, conditional, that is related to their physical body and mind. That includes things like nourishing the body, uh, exercising, staying healthy, taking a bath, staying clean, and satisfying the needs of the, their family members and society and so on. So they're all called Sambandika. And the second type of activity is called Swarupagata. And those are related to his soul. And those are the activities of devotional service. Hearing, chanting, remembering, uh, serving the deity, etc. Serving the spiritual master. Now, as long as the soul is within the body there'll always be a relationship with the sambandik vyavaha the relate the activities related to the body and uh, that will continue right up to the end of his life even after ananya bhakti pure devotion has appeared in his heart this is what is very very in, in, it's imperative to understand it's not that when Ananya Bhakti or the vritti of the Bhakti Shakti, the, the, the vibration of Krishna's spiritual energy enters into the heart of a devotee that suddenly now he has no relationship with the Sambandik Vyavaha, the worldly activities. That's not correct. But what happens is this, and that is that when pure Bhakti appears, then that devotee, he gives up his taste for worldly activities but that 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 overcoming the taste of worldly activities goes on in uh, degrees and uh, so slowly slowly that taste is for the worldly activities going away going away but it is not until the the taste for worldly activities has been completely removed until that point then sometimes the mature energy may force that devotee to behave improperly but then he quickly behaves properly again and he criticizes himself alas alas I am so dark I am so wicked I may have to go to hell for this but wherever whatever happens wherever I go whatever birth I take I will never give up service to see Krishna so, uh, Krishna thinks this person is a sadhu and, and he orders everyone else, they should also think that he is a sadhu. Now, let's, uh, Krishna is going to explain now why he thinks this person is a sadhu and why we should all consider that person a sadhu in the next verse. So, let's look at the next verse. Chipram. Here Krishna is saying in verse 31 Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shashvat Shantim Nigachati Kauntaya Pratijanahi Na Me Bhaktaha Pranasyati 
Chipra means very quickly Bhavati Dharmatma. Very quickly that devotee he becomes righteous in his behavior. Satvach and um, eternally Shantim means he becomes peaceful and pure. Nigachati. He becomes peaceful and pure forever. Kontaya Pratijana Janihi Name Bhakta Pradashati. Hey son of Kanti, O oh Arjun, you should declare it boldly that my devotee is never ruined, he's never vanquished, he never perishes. Now, let's go into some of the details of Krishna's mood in this verse and some practical examples. In the Kata Upanishad, there it is said, Navirata. Navirato duscharitan Nashanto nasamahita Nashanto manasovapi pragyanenainam apnuyat The meaning is that he who has not given up evil deeds he who is not peaceful or he who is not in control of his senses or mind cannot attain the Lord even through Gyan, even through the process of knowledge. Now, the question is, Hey Krishna, how can you consider a person who is your devotee but does some sin? How can you consider him to be a sadhu? How can you consider him to be proper? When the scriptures, such as the Kata Upanishad here, are condemning such a person. So, now, uh, the Upanishad is saying a person who is sinful, etc., cannot attain the Lord, even through the path of Gyan. Now, firstly, Gyan will not lead to realization of the Lord. And secondly, uh, it's not talking about a devotee. It's talking about an actual sinful person who is not devoted to Krishna. He can never understand the Lord. Hmm? But the person who is devoted to Krishna, if by chance suddenly coming under the control of a previous life's ku sanskar he does something wrong then krishna said that person becomes immediately purified it's important to understand this sashvat shantim nigachati the word nigachati he becomes uh, pure and peaceful immediately is in the present tense that means Krishna saying nigachati, it's in the present tense, meaning that not that he'll become pure next week or after a few years or in the next life. He's pure there and then. Why? Because Krishna is saying, I am the most purifying person and I am holding that devotee in my heart. Sadhavo, Krishna is saying, so he's a sadhu, but Krishna said, Sadhavo Ridayamayam. The sadhu is my heart. I'm holding him in my heart. So even if there's some discrepancy in his behavior, because I am pure and I hold him in my heart, he is sashvat shantim nigachati. He does not become pure, but rather he, he is pure there and then. So in the second canto, there Shukadev Goswami says, Dautatma purusha krishna padamulam namunchati. A person is considered to have a clean heart if they never give up Krishna's lotus feet. Hmm. Now, those who are uh, smarter Brahmins, hmm, so that doesn't, that, here the smarta Brahmin, this is smarta is a Sanskrit word, it means those who are following the Smriti, it's not the English word meaning that they're smarter than other Brahmins. So a smarta Brahmin means those who following the Smriti, uh, shastras which give all types of uh, rituals uh, to follow Dharma uh, to accrue good karma. So those persons they would say no 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 a person who sins can't become pure unless they perform the ritual atonements and austerities. But uh, Srimad Bhagavatam says uh, no that is not the that is not the process. Why? In the eleventh canto, there, see, Krishna is explaining to Uddhav, Swapadamulam bhajata priyasya 
Chaktanya Bhavasya Hari Parisha Vikama Yatscho Patitam Katanchit Dunoti Sarvam Vridisani Vishtaha Once there was a one sannyasi who was very famous and some he did something quite uh, terrible and uh, I came to my Gurudev privately and to speak to him about this and uh, Gurudev just looked me in the eyes with his transcendental bright blue eyes and he said Sopadamulam Bajata Priyasya he quoted this verse or hear this verse very deeply here Krishna is saying Tvaktanya Bhavasya Hari Paresha one who has given up all other engagements to take full shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord Priyasya that means that person is very dear to Krishna Krishna loves him mm -hmm. and indeed if such a surrendered soul does a vikarma that means he's not neglecting his duty but he's actually doing something sinful against uh, dharma utpatitam katanchit somehow or other it happens mm -hmm. then the supreme lord who is situated within his heart immediately takes away the reaction uh, to that sin and therefore the pure devotee does not have to do any atonement or the sadhak who is not fully pure but is rightly situated in his determination samyak vyavasito hi saha he doesn't have to do atonement in fact it would be a fall down for him to do atonement why because to atone for a sinful act by a by a ritual of karma would mean that he's leaving the path of pure bhakti to go on the path of karma so he'd be falling down from ananya bhakti to the path of karma now the path of karma is uh, rajasic it is for those who are rajasic the path of gyan is sattvic but the path of bhakti is nirgun it's completely transcendental so for ananya bhakta to try to do some atonements from the path of karma that would actually be a fall down uh, so it's important to understand that the framework of interpretation by which we can uh, judge what is a fault and what is an attribute for persons on the path of karma, gyan and bhakti they are different for example a person on the path of karma performs some ritualistic activities so that he can enjoy now he can enjoy his senses within the context of dharma and that's not a fault for him on the path of karma but it will be a fault if he does vikarma if he does something irreligious against dharma now let's look so that's the dosh and guna the virtues and the faults on the path of karma now looks let's look at the dosha and guna the virtues and faults on the path of gyan now a person on the path of gyan if he doesn't do his karmic duties that's not a fault for him because he's a, he's in his sannyas he's renounced but on the other hand if he enjoys his senses which is what the the karmi was doing as the as the result of his the performance of dharma then for him the jnani then that's a fault because the jnani always has to restrain his senses from the objects so if you look at the karmi and the jnani what is a fault for one is is okay for another and what is the attribute of one is a fault for another it's completely reversed now let's look at the fault the dosh and the gun the virtues of a devotee so for a devotee his virtue is that he's serving the Lord if he abandons the path of karma that's great that's his virtue if he abandons the path of jnana that's also his virtue it's only a fault if he gives up the path of bhakti to be involved in the path of karma and jnana now if he will do some vikarma perform some irreligious activity that is not really a fault from the perspective of transcendental bhakti uh, it is a fault from the path of karma so if a person looks at a pure devotee 
who performs by chance some irreligious activity and let's say you are a devotee and you see him and then you judge him according to the uh, the morality of the path of karma that is not a fault in that devotee it means that there's a fault in you that your faith in bhakti is not mature but your faith in bhakti is mixed with faith in karma understand that your uh, uh, faith in bhakti is mixed with faith in karma because you have tried to measure a person on the path of pure bhakti by the moral standards of the path of karma you see so and in addition to that what is also very very important is that um, it's the first offense to the holy name the first offense to the holy name is described as satam ninda namna parama aparadam vitanate yatakyatim yatam katam usahate tadvigaram it means if a person has dedicated his life to chanting the holy name and spreading the glories of the holy name if you minimize that person then that is an offense uh, to the holy name so here that refers also to the ver devotee spoken in this verse sadureva samantavya if a sadak is fixed in his resolve but some defect comes suddenly by some praktan samskar vash balatkar by the sudden force of the impressions of a previous life and then a person let's say we minimize that devotee and criticize him over this then this is an offense to the holy name and when we chant the holy names we cannot experience the divine flavor the beauty of the holy name and have the darshan of Sri Krishna and his qualities associates and pastimes in the name so this is very important point that Niraparad Nam Laile Pai Premadan, if someone chants the holy name without offense, then they must get Krishna Prem. So if we're not experiencing the rise of love within the heart when we chant the holy name, it means there must be the presence of ten offenses. Now, these ten offenses are the only thing standing between us and Krishna Prem. So you consider them as ten obstacles between you and love. And, the, and one of the main problems in spiritual life, especially in this age, in this Kali Yuga, we see that what to speak of jumping over the ten hurdles to attain Krishna Prem, most persons fall down at the first uh, hurdle. They fail to overcome the very first obstacle, and that is criticizing devotees. So if a devotee does something wrong, you, uh, you then what you should you do don't see the fault in him my Gurudev used to say if you happen to see a fault in a devotee take your cloth and cover that fault <laughs> and just wait for him to to uh, rectify himself and then you can remove it again don't uh, advertise it everywhere like wildfire try to cover it and let that person be rectified we have to be very generous and very charitable and when Krishna sees that we have such faith that bhakti is very powerful that all devotees are dear to Krishna and we act with that conviction we don't criticize others then we cross over the first hurdle to the holy name and if we can cross over that then the others are, are very easy in comparison actually so now here in this verse Krishna is saying kauntaya pratijanahi name bhaktya pranasyati which means that O son of Arjun, O son of Kunti you should declare it boldly that my devotee is never vanquished because he's always remembering me and it is said um, Om Mapavitra Pavitrova Saravavastam Gatobiva Yasmarat Pundri Kaksam Sabayabhyantara Suchi A person 
whether he is taken a bath or he is not taken a bath, whether he is pure or whether he is impure, simply by remembering the lotus-eyed Sri Krishna, that person is completely pure inside and out. So a devotee who uh, makes some mistake, even when he makes the mistake, he's pure because he remembers Krishna, oh, I wish I did not do this, I wish I was not doing this, this is so terrible. And therefore, his senses are like uh, the, uh, the bite of a, of a snake whose fangs have been removed. Just like if the, someone removes the fangs of a, of a snake, then when they're threatened, they'll bite, but the bite has no effect. So one may say, why is the, the snake biting? The snake is biting because he's uh, some, the purva abhyas, his previous habit, is making him bite, but there's no effect. So in the same way, sometimes a devotee for whom the taste for sense object has not been completely removed, if he suddenly becomes attracted to a sense object because of purva abhyas, previous habit, praktan sanskar, but still, that activity that would produce a terrible, sinful reaction for an ordinary person will have no effect. It is exactly like the bite of a serpent whose teeth have been removed. Because yasmarat pundrikaksam sabayabhyantarasuchi. One who remembers the lotus eyes of Krishna is completely pure inside and out. Now, Ar Krishna is saying to Arjun, hey son of Kunti, you should declare it boldly that my devotee is never vanquished. So this also uh, raises many interesting questions. And the first thing is that Krishna is making a reference to Kunti Devi. Now everyone knows that Kunti Devi is a pure devotee and so Arjun is from a pure lineage. So the smarter Brahmins who don't have faith in bhakti, they have faith in the good reputation of a pure lineage. Uh, for them, because they, they will find Arjun's words more credible if Krishna references, oh, Arjun, you should state this and it must be true because you would not tell a lie because you are from the pure lineage of Kunti Devi. Krishna is using this to convince uh, the skeptics and uh, make the statement more credible to those uh, skeptics. Another reason that Krishna is saying, telling Arjuna to uh, make this vow, and that is that as Shukadev Goswami has said in the seventh canto, Satyam vidatum nija, nija bhritya basitum, which means that the Supreme Lord acts to always make the words of his servants true. Whereas if Krishna himself were to say, oh, I declare that my devotee is, very, uh, is never vanquished, then someone could have a doubt in that because Krishna may, under certain circumstances, uh, break his own vow. Now the demigods, when Krishna was in the room, they have prayed. Satyabratam satya param tri satyam satyasa yonim nitam cha satye satyasya satyam rita satra netram satyatmakam tvam shanam prapanaha. O Krishna, you are the truth of the truth, and we are taking shelter of you. You reside in the truth, your senses are true. Your uh, your vows are true. You are the truth in the past, the present and the future. You are the absolute truth. But still, we see that sometimes Krishna broke his vow. In the battle of uh, Kurukshetra, then uh, we know that Sri Krishna had promised, I will not take up a weapon. But one day it happened that Duryodhan on the uh, about the sixth day of the battle of Kurukshetra, Duryodhan was in a very fierce fight with a Bhima Sain. And uh, Duryodhan's chariot driver was killed and he himself was uh, almost mortally wounded and became unconscious. And at that time, Kripa Acharya came and removed Duryodhan from the battlefield. Afterwards, when Duryodhan came to sense and he was nursing his wounds, he was really angry 
uh, that he'd been defeated. He was really ashamed and he was wondering, why are we not winning this battle? We have a grandfather Bhishma on our side. And so Duryodhan went to grandfather Bhishma and, and he essentially said to him that if you were fighting to your full capacity, then the Pandavas would already be killed. I think that um, out of favoritism for them, you're not doing your duty. Now, Bhishma is very much Karmanishta, fixed in the performance of his duties. So his uh, heart was injured by these words of Duryodhan. So then Duryodhan watched as uh, Grandfather Bhishma spread out a silken cloth before him and then he took five arrows and touching the arrows to his head he began to utter mantras and then he placed the five arrows down and wrapped them in the silken cloth. Then Bhishma Dev said, I, by the power of my tapasya, my austerities, I have invested these five arrows with such potency that even the demigods uh, cannot escape them. And by these five arrows, tomorrow I will kill the five Pandavas. When Duryodhan heard this, he was very inspired. But then he became suspicious, and, he th and, and so he said to Bhishma Dev, All right, good. I'll keep these arrows with me tonight, just to make sure. And uh, I'll give them to you in the morning. And then Duryodhan, he took the arrows, and very happily he went back to his camp. In the meantime, the uh, Pandavas were having a meeting. Duryodhan, he said, Oh, uh, we are winning. It looks as if we are winning this battle. If we keep going on the way that we're going with Bhim Sain and Arjun destroying thousands of warriors every day, we're going to win. But I am concerned that as Duryodhan sees that he's losing, he's going to take some extreme measures. So they were having a meeting. Yudhisthira Maharaj said that Duryodhan will take extreme measures. So then Krishna said to Arjun, Hey Arjun, do you remember that time when Duryodhan had been overpowered by the Gandharva soldiers in the forest of Kamyavan? Arjun said, Yes, I remember. Krishna said, At that time you went and you uh, saved Duryodhan from being uh, uh, kidnapped by the Gandharva soldiers and at that time though Duryodhan was reluctant to admit it he realized that he was indebted to you and at that time Duryodhan said uh, I'll give you a boon but you did not take any boon from him so today I want you to ask from him a boon Arjun said, what is that? Krishna told him, he has five arrows that he has taken from Bhishma Dev. Just ask him for those five arrows. So then Arjun, he got on a white horse and in the night he rode across the battlefield and he came to the camp of Duryodhan. Now Katriyas, they fight during the day, but when the sun is setting and the conch shells are blown in the evening, then the fighting is over and they're free to visit each other and they treat each other with, with great respect. That is the, the code of chivalry among the warriors. So when Arjun approached uh, Duryodhan, Duryodhan saw him and he said, Oh, why have you come here, Arjun? You're most welcome, please take a seat. Have you come to request from me the kingdom? Hmm? If you have come to request from me the kingdom, I will give it to you at once without hesitation. So when Arjun heard these words, he understood that Duryodhan was not being dharmic or generous, but rather he was being facetious. Because he knew that Arjun, being a Katriya, being proud, he would never uh, beg something from, from anyone. And so, though Duryodhan was making a show of being very liberal and saying, if you ask me in charity for the kingdom, I'll give it to you without a fight if you want to avoid, avoid fighting me. That was also part of his criticism of Arjun and his um, self-aggrandizement. Uh, do you want to avoid fighting me? Yes, ask for the kingdom, I'll give it to you. 
but Duryodhan knew that Arjun would not accept. So Arjun sat down and he said, Oh Duryodhan, do you remember that you said you would give me one boon? Duryodhan remembered, yes. Arjun said, then I request that now. You have five arrows of Bhishma Dev, please give them to me. <gasps> Duryodhan was shocked. But he had no choice and he took the arrows wrapped in silk cloth and he gave them to Arjun. Then Duryodhan said, How did you know about the five arrows? Hmm? He was suspicious. Perhaps it was he was being double crossed by Bhishma Dev. Bhishma Dev could have sent some message. Arjun said, Oh, Krishna told me to do this. Then Duryodhan thought, Oh, this Krishna, this Yadava, he is very, very tricky. How did he know? How did he do that? But still, because of his offenses, he could not develop faith that Krishna is the omniscient supreme personality of Godhead. This is one of the reactions for Aparad, offense to Krishna or offense to his devotee. That our heart cannot have a steady faith and the faith keeps being broken by doubts. Hmm. So, in this way, uh, see Krishna save the Pandavas from being killed by those arrows. But the next day in the battle, Bhishma Dev, he fought very, very ferociously. And Arjun was in a, a critical situation. He was about to be uh, killed. And at that time, see Krishna, who had taken a vow not to take up weapons, jumped down from the chariot, picked up a broken chariot wheel, and ran at, at Bhishma Dev to kill him with the wheel. And as Krishna was running towards Bhishma Dev. Then Bhishma, he actually put down his weapons and, and lowered his arms and he was ready to be killed by Sri Krishna. And Bhishma was in ecstasy. He was thinking, oh, I made a vow uh, uh, to, I promised I would kill the Pandavas and Krishna promised that he would not take up weapons but out of love for his devotee. One, out of intense love for Arjun that he cannot bear to see Arjun uh, be defeated. And two, secondarily, out of love for Bhishma that he cannot um, tolerate that uh, Bhishma's promise will be broken. Krishna himself broke his own promise. Mm -hmm. So Krishna is Bhaktavatsala, very affectionate to his devotees. He has the quality of Prema Vashita. He is controlled by the love of his devotees. And Krishna was carrying that wheel in his hand and running like death personified to kill Bhishma Dev. But Arjun, he was horrified. Oh no, just to save me, Krishna is breaking his words. And he ran after Krishna and he tackled him and he grabbed the thighs of Krishna but Krishna was still running Krishna's cloth fell from his shoulder and finally uh, Arjun dug his heels into the ground and managed to stop Krishna from from running and said no you should not break your promise uh, uh, on uh, on my uh, account and just then uh, the conches were blown to signal that the fighting for that day is over and Krishna put down uh, the chariot wheel. So here we see an example of how Krishna broke his word out of love for his devotee. And how much more that happens in Vrindavan when Madhya Yashoda said to baby Krishna, Oh, your friends have told me that you've been eating dirt. Have you been eating dirt? Open your mouth, I want to see. See, Krishna said, Naham bakshitavam amba sarve mitya bisangshinaha. Oh, mother, I have not eaten dirt. My friends, they're all telling lies. So, Krishna was criticizing his friends and also telling a lie at the same two lies at the same time. Why? Because he was controlled by the love of his friends and controlled by the love of Madhya Shoda. So, sometimes Krishna can break his word. But, as it is said in Srimad Bhagavatam, 
Satyam vidatam nija vrtyabhasitam. Krishna always makes the words of his devotee true. Just as uh, when the four Kumaras said that Jayan Vijay will take birth at three lives as demons and then Supreme Lord will kill them and they'll return to Vaikuntha. So Lord Nishingadeva appeared to keep true the words of the four Kumaras. And as Lord Brahma said uh, that Hiranyakashipu could not be killed in the house or out of the house in the day or the night or with any weapon or any human being or animal. So Krishna appeared as Lord Nishingadeva on the threshold, not inside or outside, at dusk, not in the day or the night, not with any weapon, but using his nails to kill Hiranyakashipu, and not as a human being or animal, but part animal, lion, and part human being, like this. So, whatever the pure devotee says, Krishna always makes that true. And that is why he is saying, Kauntya Pratijanihi Name Bhakti Pranashati Hey Arjun, you should declare it boldly that my devotee is never vanquished. So, someone may raise the question, and that is that, O oh Krishna, how can you accept the, the offerings of a person who's done some sinful activity? It's very valid because every day devotees are cooking and they bring the preparations to the altar and they offer it to Krishna. So someone who has faith in karma, smart Brahmin, may say, what is this Krishna? How can you accept food cooked by a person who has done something terrible? And when we say sudaracharo, it refers to things like murder, eating meat, uh, stealing gold, um, uh, illicit connection with women and uh, even Sila Vishnu Takitaku says defiling the bed of the spiritual master and so on. So these are all terrible things. So how can you accept the offerings of such a person? And so Krishna in this verse is saying Chipram. Hmm? Chipram means oh very quickly and negativity in the present tense. That means there and then he becomes pure. Bhavati. Bhavati is also in the present tense. So th is, this indicates that that person, he immediately becomes uh, pure. Bhakti is the best medicine. It is the, the only atonement. There is nothing else to do. And therefore, if the person is pure, then there is no, there's no argument. But, Someone may say, look, what happens if a devotee has a bad habit and it doesn't happen just once by accident, but this habit it goes on again and again and he has that habit his whole life until the day he dies even and he dies having not conquered over that bad habit. What about that? So then it's understood that Krishna, his eyes have become red and he's looking at Arjun and saying, Arjun, take a murdanga, take kettle drums and trumpets and cartels and go into the marketplace, into the center of town and beat them loudly and declare to everyone, Name Bhakta Pranasati, hmm? O son of Kunti, you should declare. My devotee is never vanquished, even if he cannot overcome the influence of Praktan Sanskar impressions from the previous life, even till the day he dies. He is never ruined. And then Krishna said, and if you declare boldly in this way, then everyone will consider that your words are so eloquent and wonderful. They will bow down to you and accept you as Guru. <laughs> So, this is the sentiment, the loving sentiment of Krishna in this verse, expressing the glories of transcendental bhakti and his deep love for his devotees and his warnings to the whole world. Never criticize my devotees. Hare Krishna. Bhagavad Gita ki jai. Sila Gurudev ki jai. Sila Prabhupada ki jai. 
Vale Brindavan Bihari Lala Ki Jai Varasani Wali Ki Jai 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 Sri Radhe Shalom